before you start investing today, all you really need to do is go have a shower, brush your teeth, polish your shoes, cut your fingernails, and also change those socks you were wearing yesterday. You still got them on. Ew. Ew! We need more E's and W's down here now! Might not be quite that simple, but in all seriousness, here are the things you need to do to make sure that your money gets working for you as early as possible so we can grow your wealth into your favorite stocks or funds. In this video, I'm gonna go through five things very, very simply, one by one. Everything here is geared at making sure that you spend as much time in the market as possible, which is the best proven way to make sure you can grow your wealth in the long term. Just take the example of Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. Believe it or not, most of his wealth actually came from his 65th birthday and onwards but that's only because he's been investing for such a long time. Testing one million, two million, three million. Yeah. He's been investing since he was a kid. His partner and friend and great longtime right-hand man, a guy called Charlie Munger, he famously said that the first rule of compounding is to never interrupt it unnecessarily. So all of these tips are really geared toward making sure that we never have to dip into our investments once we put that money in there month after month, year after year, get that growing for us, get compound interest working for us really, really hard and making sure that we're set for the future. After all, we know in the future we're probably gonna have lots of ups and lots of downs. When they're gonna come, who knows? Okay, let's get straight into this. In number one, making sure we pay off any high interest debt. Now we're not interested in things like mortgages here or any other really long-term low interest debts. I'm talking about payday loans, credit cards or anything else you might have out there on finance anything that might be costing us in the long term quite a lot of money. I can't give you an exact percentage here, but if you speak to any financial analysts or advisors, they're typically talking about anything in the double digit percentage, so anything 10% and above, or anything really above what you might gain in the stock market. So if we take the average of the S&P 500 over the last kind of 50 or so years, we're looking at returns of around 8%. So maybe you could use that as a guide of the kind of debts that you need to look at paying off. Clearly in this example, if you've got a credit card sat there with 15% interest and you could only get 8% interest in the market, you really need to pay down that credit card first before you start investing. In number two, make sure you get a good deal on all of your household bills. The phone company, the energy company, your car insurance broker are not your friends. Uh oh, friend! Oh, new friend! Friend! Oh, friend! He's my friend! Oh. And actually, rather than reducing your costs, this could be hurting your finances. Why not try and switch providers regularly? Looking for better deals. It's now easier more than it has ever been to do this. Go to your favorite comparison site, go through, enter your details, see if you can get that switch and get that done today. You'll be amazed how easy it is now. No more getting around on the phone. A lot of this can be done online and you can save yourself a small fortune. I recently looked through all of my bills and went through and making sure I wasn't paying too much and I actually found I could save a hundred pounds a month. So I've already done those switches and they're coming through online as we speak. Remember, that gas and electric and water coming into your house isn't gonna change depending on who you pay. So get yourself switched today. In number three, creating an emergency fund. Now, this is arguably probably the most important one, and it's something we all need to make sure that we have. As described, an emergency fund is really a pot of money set to one side that enables us to be able to pay for life's unexpected emergencies. Guess what? I think I'm pregnant again. No, I swear. No, no, no. Wait, 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 hey, come back! Which, ultimately, we know are coming, we just don't know when they're gonna come and how much they're gonna cost us. If we lose our job, need to repair our car, the washing machine breaks down, all of these unexpected costs just come out of the blue. And the last thing we want to do is to dip into a nice new investment pot and interrupt that compound interest that we spoke about earlier. Now, the amount you need is more of an art than a science, to be honest. You'll hear wildly different numbers from different people, different experts in the field, but this could be really anything from three to 12 months of your living expenses. Grab everything together, your mortgage, your rent, your bills, car payments, whatever else you need to facilitate, add them together and make sure that you've got at least three months set aside. Honestly, the feeling that you get when you go to bed at night, knowing that in the event of something really bad happening, you've got that covered is an absolute game changer, trust me. In number four, sort out your household budget. You can't invest anything unless you spend less than you bring in. Let me say this again, because that is so important. You can't invest a single penny, a single pound, a single dollar until you've saved money from your income and covered all of your expenses. I know how difficult this might seem, but it really is the first step in financial independence. 
having things under control and knowing that you've got the finances covered when the unexpected happen really is something worth doing and could be a huge stress reliever. Work with your partner, your family, your friends, house hack, split bills, rent a spare room, do whatever you can. The amount of money I've saved recently by shopping at Aldi is unbelievable. I wish I'd done it sooner. You don't have to be real penny pinches here or be the Grinch. No one's asking us to do that. But maybe imagine that every one pound that you spend today is worth about 10 in the future. So if it's not essential, is it really gonna bring you a lot of happiness? When I think about budgeting and spending, a Dave Ramsey quote always pops into my head. He said, if you live like no one else, later on, you can live like no one else. And finally, in number five for me, check your pensions. Make sure you're making the most of your allowances here and see what you can do depending on where you work. If your workplace, for example, will match you up to a certain percentage, whether that's five, six, seven, eight percent, why not go up to that maximum allowance? Remember in the UK, you're automatically enrolled in a workplace pension, whether you like it or not, unfortunately, unless you hit a few very specific criteria. So have a look at your pay packet, see what's coming out every month, and see if it might be worth you contributing a little bit more and making the most of that lovely tax-free saving. Remember, I'm just some guy on the internet, so if you want real professional financial advice, make sure you go seek a qualified financial advisor. I hope you found that useful. Good luck getting everything sorted. It really is important getting everything sorted and working for you in the background before you start investing. Remember the goal here is to have that money working for us month after month, year after year. You're a long-term investor like me. I want that money to be working for me and left there and never have to touch. Once you're ready to invest, why not check out a couple of other my videos that I've done recently. I've done a beginner's guide to investing in a stocks and shares ISA, and I've also done eight different ways that you can invest your money. Go check them out now. Thanks and I hope you found the video useful. Drop me a like if you have and feel free to subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next one.